it influences weather patterns across the world. From flooding in Australia to devastating droughts in Africa. I'm talking about the phenomena of El Niño and La Niña. In our last video, I explained extensive about what El Niño is and how it affects the world. Haven't seen this first episode yet? Go check it out after this one. But first, let's take a closer look at what La Niña is, the colder sister of El Niño. However, this cold event might not feel so cold in today's warming world. Let's start with what La Niña exactly is. La Niña is the cool phase of ENSO, the El Niño Southern Oscillation, marked by colder than average sea surface temperatures across the central and eastern equatorial Pacific. Trade winds blowing from east to west strengthen, pushing warm water toward Asia and allowing cold, nutrient-rich water to upwell along the Americas. This intensifies ocean-atmosphere interaction, forming a cool water band across the Pacific. At the same time, atmospheric pressure rises over the eastern Pacific and falls over the western Pacific, altering the southern oscillation. These shifts reshape the walker circulation and reposition the jet stream, especially in North America. Winters tend to be wetter and cooler in the north but warmer and drier in the south. Additionally, La Niña's stronger trade winds reduce Atlantic wind shear, often fueling more intense hurricane seasons. The terms El Niño and La Niña means little boy and little girl. The term originated centuries ago among Peruvian fishermen. They noticed that the ocean sometimes became unusually warm around Christmas and that the fish disappeared. La Niña was recognized later, gaining scientific prominence only in the late 20th century. In the 1920s, Gilbert Walker discovered the atmospheric pressure seesaw of the Southern Oscillation, and by the 1960s, Jacob Bjerknes linked this to ocean temperature shifts, forming today's ENSO framework. La Niña events occur every two to seven years, and typically last nine to 12 months, though multi-year events called triple dips, are rare. Only three of those triple dip events occurred since the 1970s. In 1973 to 1976, 1998 to 2001, and 2020 to 2023. A strong El Niño was followed by the 1998 to 2001 La Niña, which cooled global temperatures and caused flooding in southern Africa, like the devastating Mozambique floods of 2000 and drought in western North America. The recent 2020 to 2023 event surprised forecasters. It wasn't preceded by a strong El Niño. Studies point to unique driving mechanisms, including extratropical forces and changing Pacific climate states, challenging prediction models. This period saw record storm Atlantic hurricane seasons, catastrophic floods in Australia and Pakistan, drought in the Horn of Africa and widespread disruptions. La Niña changes precipitation patterns, wetter in Southeast Asia, Indonesia and Northern Australia, drier in East Africa and parts of South America and Asia. In North and South America, northern regions receive more rain and snow, while the southwestern United States and the southern plains often experience drought. La Niña years also often see more intense Atlantic hurricane activity. And economically, the effects are profound. Agriculture benefits in places like South Asia, but suffers in East Africa, where 2010 to 11 La Niña helped trigger famine. Yet disasters like Australia's 2010 floods and the US Great Plains drought of 1988 highlight double-edged consequences. Ecosystems feel La Niña too. 
cold upwellings boost marine life like anchovies, squid and salmon, reviving fisheries along South America's coast. On land, droughts spark wildfires and dust storms, and flooding from intensified rain, such as Australia and South Asia, causes soil erosion, habitat destruction and waterway disruption, making La Nina's environmental consequences complex and multifaceted. Even though La Nina is natural, today's warming world complicates its role. Recent La Nina cycles didn't produce expected global cooling. Climate change may be blunting its signature effects. For instance, the 2024-25 La Nina was brief and weak, despite initial expectations. And so neutral conditions now make forecasting more uncertain. The NOAA is exploring a relative ENSO index to account for global warming skewing baseline conditions, aiming for better detection and forecasting. The NOAA stands for National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and is a US government agency that studies and monitors the ocean, atmosphere, climate and weather to provide forecasts, warnings and environmental protection. Recognizing La Nina signals early is crucial. Meteorologists urge vigilance as governments and key sectors – agriculture, disaster management and fisheries – use ENSO patterns to prepare for floods, droughts and stronger hurricanes. The potential impacts are wide-ranging – reduced crop yields in Southeast Asia, higher wildfire risk in Australia and more intense Atlantic hurricane seasons. To improve readiness, scientists now use new detection methods, which identifies early warning signs and advanced models that track multi-year events. These are essential tools for building climate resilience. So La Nina may be a cold event in name, but its effects are anything but chilly spanning rain and drought, ecosystems and economies, land and sea. With the climate heating up, staying informed and prepared matters more than ever. If you enjoyed this deep dive and want to explore more about geography, climate or weather, be sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell. Haven't seen the first episode about El Nino yet? Go check it out now. Drop your questions or regional impacts in the comments and I see you in the next video.